As you know, we do this every Monday, talking to people who are doing big things in various fields, hearing their stories. Today is exciting, but it's actually a bit of a challenge. It, how do I interview somebody who, if you look at it, is better at my job than me? Like We kind of sit down and talk to them about their achievements as a talk show host. Craig Ferguson is that guy as talk show host and actor and best-selling author and, and all good things, and apparently is also on the run doing the interview from the car. <laughs> How are you, sir? You know, I'm good. I, I, it's nice to meet you, Bill, and and uh, thank you for not revealing my location. Uh, I have a lot of different law enforcement uh, agencies searching me at the moment. Let's just say I'm somewhere in the Ohio Turnpike area. By the time we go ahead and air this, you go ahead and cover your tracks. <laughs> You'll be all good. Yeah, I'll be in Venezuela by then. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's tough to do to hide when you're kind of on tour, but we'll get to that in, <laughs> in just a second. We, we all know where you're going to be. Uh, That's but it's true. all good. Uh, so that, starting with, we all try to kind of do a background with people. Yours is pretty extensive. Uh, but when people ask you to kind of start with that whole process of explaining how you got to where you are, is there a, a condensed version of that to start us off? Yeah, I guess there's a very simple uh, beginning of it is that in 1990, 1975, when I was 13, I went to a Blue Oyster Cult concert in Smithtown, Long Island. I smoked a joint, and here I am. <laughs> That's the really short version. I, I, I suppose, um, you, you know, I, I'm kind of an autodidact. I'm a high school dropout. I'm a kind of like, a, I, I, I have an unusual trajectory. And so it's difficult to say, uh, what happened when I was a drummer in rock and roll bands when I was, you know, when I was 17, 18 years old and I fell in with show business people that I wouldn't normally have met because I'm from a blue collar background. And that kind of led me into what I'm doing now. And I think when you say someone has an extensive background, I think what are you really saying is they're quite old. I think they're quite old <laughs> because most of it is background. So I, I believe that's what you heard. I don't think that's what I said. We're just talking about the whole, <laughs> that means that they've had a lot of experiences. Nice. You know, both yeah, both okay, you know, okay. positive growth. They're mature and have experienced a lot of things in life. You're yeah. very, you are very good at this. Let me tell you, I think that whole introduction about me being better at your job than you, uh, that was, uh, that's not true. I think you're very, very good at this. I, I feel challenged. And you're only saying that because you're on the run and don't want us to reveal your location. <laughs> but okay, like, we, will, we will roll with that. Um, known for a lot of <laughs> okay. different things. You talked about, you know, you started playing in a band. You obviously are known for late night TV, uh, multiple television shows, comedy, of course. Um, how do you define yourself? What do you want people to know you for? I... I I've been asked that a couple of times before, and I'll, I'll try and answer it honestly, which is I don't, uh, it's not that I don't care. I just don't think it's for me to say how I'll be defined, how, how you define any other human being is how you define it. So if I'm, if I'm a late night talk show host to you, then that's what I am. That's all you know. If I'm, you know, if I'm a drummer to you, then you're probably a group of about 15 people that saw me 30 years ago playing drums. But I, I don't, I, I try not to think about myself that much uh, because I, I don't think that's a way to be happy. Was that deflecting the question? I try. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying not to. I'm trying to be honest with it, but I don't define myself as anything. I do what's in front of me and I, I try to have a good time. But I don't think it's deflecting the question. At the same time, it's unusual for somebody in the public eye. Uh, to say I don't necessarily like talking about myself that much. I don't necessarily, you know, want to define myself a, a specific way. It's not the celebrity answer. Yeah, I, I, I'm uncomfortable with the word celebrity as well, because I think that's a good word for like maybe cruises or, um, you know, <laughs> like, the, uh, like a cable package. But I think that the that calling yourself a celebrity is a little weird, and I, I I don't I don't like it. It's like when people say they have followers, I think, well, you're not a prophet, you know, you're not you don't really have followers. I, I just I, I'm uncomfortable with the wording of it. I 
I try and uh, be uh, egalitarian about myself as much as anyone else. So, like, if I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you, whether your job is big timey movie actor or your job is uh, working in the toll booth uh, uh, on the Ohio Turnpike. If I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you. You don't seem like you're somebody who necessarily enjoyed the spotlight all that much. Like you were good at it. Like you're doing these different things. And so it's been a career path for you. Uh, But it doesn't seem like that was like, I want to be on TV. That doesn't seem like what's motivating you. No, it's not. I think if I'm honest, when I was a kid, I wanted for... uh, um, I wanted what a lot of kids want, which is I want to be rich and famous. And I and I then I kind of I, I did okay, and I and I got a little bit famous, and I and I it doesn't really mean much. Um, and also, I think that if it if that's all you want, then what are you going to do once you get it? Uh, and I don't want that. I, I I'm I am a little uncomfortable in the spotlight as well. I find myself being a little evasive because I feel like. I'm being asked to sell you something. And I, and I really don't want to sell you anything, even down to selling you a ticket for a show. I'm like, if you don't want to come, don't come. It, it, it's cool. We can still, you know, we can agree to disagree. You don't have to, you don't have to like me. It's fine. Going to the kind of late night TV thing, that's what a lot of people know, at least one part of what a lot of people know. That, sure. that presentation came across. Like, is, it, is it at all unusual to you that the just kind of comfortable sitting there talking to people, being really comfortable making it about them and not about you, uh, was successful. I think maybe it was because I, I didn't know anything about late night television when I started it, and I, I didn't know anything about it when I was doing it, and I still don't know anything about it. And um, for me, being a late night host is a bit like maybe a, the way a lot of people become realtors, that, you know, nobody sets out to be a realtor, but it, it's a decent job and you get your, you know, picture on a bus stop. So why not? <laughs> and I, I did it like that. Now I love the job. I, I love to do it. But um, there came a point where I thought it's not really what I want to do with the rest of my life. And it's uh, it's a very corporate environment. It's just, it's a very corporate, very, um, I don't want to say restrictive because it wasn't restrictive, but it was, there, there are rules and I don't always do well with rules. 